What's up guys, Elijah here. If you've watched my channel before, then you know I love saving money and getting good deals on computer parts. I'm always building budget banger gaming PCs, but today we have an all new gaming PC. Let's see how it performs and if it's worth the brand new price tag. I first wanna give a huge thank you to Shane. This guy is a beast. He was just a random person at first that enjoyed my content and loved what I was doing since the beginning and has been supporting me ever since. He is the one that sent all the parts out for this video, and I'm super grateful for that. Everyone say thank you Shane in the comments, and if you aren't in the Discord server, join it right now and at him and just say thank you as well. Also, visit his Patreon down below and support him for supporting us. But since we are on the topic of thanking, I wanna quickly thank today's video sponsor, Super CDK. They have been my personal supplier for cheap and legitimate Windows keys. Head down below, they have Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. Once you add the key to your cart, Simply apply the discount code SPLA to save on that sweet, sweet green. Visit Super City K down below and let's finally get to the video. The start of this awesome PC build is the CPU. Funny thing, this is an all new gaming PC, but it is still on the budget side, so it stays close to my roots. We're going with one of the new 12th gen processors, not the newest anymore, but it is the i5-12400F. It is a solid little six core 12 threaded processor with a base speed of 2.5 gigahertz but it has a boost speed of 4.4 gigahertz. I really love Intel's new stock coolers. The new blacked out design is sick as hell, but we will not be using this one. To cool the i5, we're gonna be using an affordable tower cooler. It is a Vetro V5 in white. It is a nice cooler with five copper heat pipes and a 120 millimeter ARGB fan. And it comes at a price of around 20 to $30, depending on the time of purchase. I've used this multiple times in the past and it shouldn't have any problems cooling our little i5. Holding everything together is this motherboard from Asus. It is the Asus Prime B660 Plus D4. It is a solid ATX motherboard with some all right looking VRMs, three M.2 slots, which I'm a big fan of, and it has an M.2 Wi-Fi slot. It has four DIMM slots, decent rare IO with a USB Type-C port, and it even has a USB Type-C header on the motherboard. The 12th gen Intel processors support DDR4 and DDR5, but to keep this build more affordable, we're going to be going with DDR4, which is why I chose this motherboard. To fill up one of the three M.2 slots, we're using this drive from MSI. It is a Spadium M470, which is 1TB PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD. It should be pretty quick. To occupy two of the four DIMM slots, we're going with this RAM kit from Silicon Power. It is an X-Power 2x8GB DDR4 kit clocked at 3200MHz. 16GB of RAM is still plenty for gaming, but if you're doing more creative work, then I recommend a 32GB kit. To house her mother, we're going with this really slick case from Fractal Design. It is the Fractal Torrent Compact in the white colorway. The design on this case is amazing. I really love the front panel. It is pretty good for airflow, especially with the two included massive 180mm fan. To power everything, we're using a beast of a unit from Asus. It is the Asus ROG Strix 750 watt, 80 plus gold, and it is fully modular. And on top of that, it looks so sick and it's just a power supply. To add to the power supply, we're using some white cable extensions from Asia Horse. Nothing too crazy, just to add a bit of color and they look better than the stock PSU cables. No gaming PC is complete without a GPU, especially this one since the i5 does not have integrated graphics. The GPU we're going with is the Asus Dual RTX 3060 12GB version. It's a nice compact card with subtle RGB detail and it requires one 8-pin PCIe plug. We got a lot of parts from Asus. Thank you, Shane.
Alrighty, the PC is fully built. Let's turn it on and see if it works. Just plugged in the monitor cable, flip the power switch, press the power button. There we go. Springs to life right away. There's a little monitor. Oh, that thing looks clean. All the fans are spinning. Oh, it turned off. Turned back on. Since it's all new parts, it might be trying to recognize everything maybe. Oh, there we go. Already the PC works. I mean, of course it does, I built it. Anyways, this thing looks super sick. I'm gonna install Windows on it and a few games. Then we're gonna test it out and see what kind of performance you can get from a brand new gaming PC. After installing Windows and all the games, the first game I'm gonna be testing is Call of Duty Cold War. I played some free for all and I'm testing the game at 1080p with almost all settings set to max other than ray tracing is set to medium and motion blur is off. And I set NVIDIA DLL, and I set NVIDIA DLL, and I set NVIDIA DLSS to balanced. Yeah, I can't say that for some reason, but you guys should know what I'm talking about. I didn't do too bad. I'm surprised I still managed a positive KD, but I did get sniped on the play of the game. The PC managed an average FPS of 122. I also tested the game at 1080p with all settings set to low or disabled, and I had that NVIDIA settings set to quality, and it managed an average FPS of 223. The next game up is good old Fortnite. I ran some solos at 1080p with performance mode, 3D res set to 80%, view distance set to far, and everything else set to low. With those settings, I managed an average FPS of 218. I played one game and got killed right off the bat by Pickle Brick. Let's run it back. Yeah, same thing. Next game, time for some Apex Legends. I tested in 1080p with all the shadow settings set to low or disabled, and the other settings were at medium, and I managed an average FPS of 253. Next game up is GTA 5. I tested at 1080p with all high settings and the first thing I noticed was lag spikes that looked like they were happening because it couldn't handle the higher frame numbers and I think the game engine was lagging so I enabled VSync and we got an average FPS of 147. I also tried to steal something from the military base and it didn't go as planned. The last two games I'm testing are just going to be synthetic benchmarks. I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with the settings set to the high preset and that Nvidia setting set to quality and the game managed an average FPS of around 100. The last game is Borderlands 3. I tested it at 1080p with the graphics set to ultra settings and we managed an average FPS of 78. We're done testing all the games. This PC can pretty much handle any game you throw at it at 1080p with low to high settings. Of course, if you adjust the settings, you will get more FPS. Like in Call of Duty Cold War, we had all high settings and we got an average FPS of like 100. And then we lowered the settings and got an average FPS of around 200. So if you want to play esports titles, it'll be super good for you. And if you also want to play 1440p, you'll just have to lower the settings a little bit. So is something like this worth it? Well, short answer, yes. It roughly costs around $1,200 to build this gaming PC today, but you can always go with the cheaper case, cheaper storage, just cheaper parts overall, and maybe buy a used RTX 3060 to save on some price. So yes, of course this PC is worth it. It is pretty modern parts. It'll last you a while. So you just have to ask yourself, is it worth it to you? All the parts used in today's video will be linked down below, as well as some cheaper alternatives to some of the parts. Anyways, another huge thank you to Shane. I really appreciate you, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, then consider watching this video next, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.